In this video, I'll be discussing flying, floating, and rolling computers. This video is brought to you by the National Cybersecurity Training and Education Center out of Whatcom Community College. The creation of this video was funded by a National Science Foundation Advanced Technological Education Grant. My name is Philip Kreger, and I'm an Associate Professor of Cybersecurity at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Daytona Beach, Florida. Before we get into what are flying, floating, and rolling computers, we need to have two definitions of two key terms. The first of which is information communication technologies. And that's defined as technologies that provide access to information through telecommunications. And it's like information technology, but focused primarily on communication technologies. And that would include the internet, wireless networks, cell phones, and other communication mediums. The second term we need to discuss and define is cyber physical systems. And cyber physical systems are integrations of computation, networking, and physical processes. Embedded computers and networks monitor and control the physical processes with feedback loops where physical processes affect computations and vice versa. So what does all that mean when we're talking about flying, floating, and rolling computers? Well, let's take a look. And so I'm assuming that most of everybody who's listening to this is a community college student or, or lower level university student that is working through a program in either IT or cybersecurity, but it really doesn't matter. And so as IT students, you're learning how to set up computers and set up networks and to fix computers and networks. If you're cyber, you know a little bit about that, but also you're learning a lot about how to secure those computers and networks. And you're usually working with servers and workstations and laptops and routers and hubs. And then once you graduate, you're expecting to go out and you're expecting to get a job where you use those essential skills. And so you may start out in a small office doing those things. And then at some point in time, you may work your way up to something that's very grand, let's say working in a Google or an Amazon Web Services server farm. And so some of you may be asking yourself, are those my only two options? Well, actually they're not. Even the skills that you learned working with the computers and networks in an IT capacity or cyber capacity could be applied in other advanced and maybe even more interesting situations. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. You could use your skills with aircraft. You could use your skills with container ships. And you could even use your skills with automobiles. Now, why is that? Why am I bringing up aircraft and ships and automobiles when we're talking about computers and networks? So what do aircrafts and ships and automobiles have to do with cybersecurity? If anything, it's not clear. Well, one of the things I do for all my classes is I start out with five or seven minutes talking about cyber attacks in the news. So initially, in the first few days of the course, I may be talking about airlines and cyber attacks. Or I could be talking about ships, container ships, naval ships, and cyber attacks, and even automobiles and cyber attacks. And the reason I can do that is because modern aircraft, modern ships, and modern automobiles rely heavily on cyber physical systems and ICT to function and maintain safety. And whether it's clear to you or not, those of you in IT or those of you in cyber a lot of the things that you've learned, those, that skill and that knowledge is directly relevant to both not only cyber physical systems, but also ICT as well. Let's take a look at an example. So this is the flight deck of a very old aircraft. And you can see that it has a multitude of gauges. Uh, they're, they're primarily physical gauges, they're manual gauges, and those are the gauges and the associated sensors that are being relied upon by the pilots to fly the plane. And so let's step up to the 2020s and see what an aircraft flight deck looks like. And this is what they look like now. Notice now everything has an LED screen. There's, there's far fewer gauges. Uh, the gauges now are in color and it looks like that these are actually computer monitors. And actually they are. We've gone from something that looks like this to something that looks like this. And the reason is aircraft, that is modern aircraft, rely much more on those cyber physical systems and ICT than 
the antique aircraft that I showed you before. And by the way, notice this is a Boeing 777. So it's a very new aircraft. And this is what it looks like up close. And so we see a comparison between the two. Now, I want you to try to think of what the networks look like on one of these aircraft. Now, by the way, it was very difficult for me to find an example of a network on an actual airplane, on a modern airplane. But I was able to find one, and you look at it, and you look, that's what it looks like. And if you think about that, in the abstract, it pretty much looks like a lot of the networks you may be working with when you're talking about workstations and servers and laptops and so on. The technology really isn't that different, the ICT technology. The only difference is, is now, rather than just hooking up computers and sending emails and setting up web servers and so on, is you're actually working with cyber physical systems. And the, the important part of that cyber physical part is the cyber part, because the physical systems are being controlled by the cyber. Airline computers and electronic control systems allow pilots to fly hands off beginning soon after takeoff, continuing through the flight route, and in very rare cases, all the way through touchdown. And so if you've been on an aircraft in the last few years, you've probably been on a plane that was controlled in this manner. So if we think about it, modern aircraft are really just flying computers and flying networks, as they're heavily reliant on those cyber physical systems and the underlying ICT. Let's look at another example. This is an old bridge from a very old ship, and I'm not sure what ship this is. But as you can see, there's really no advanced technology on here. Everything pretty much is mechanical. Now we move to a modern ship, and we see just like with a Boeing 777, that everything is computerized. And so we have all these LED monitors up here. Some of these are showing the weather and the navigation systems and so on. And here we have our keyboards on the bottom. And so all modern ships are moving to this type of system. One that's based on cyber physical systems as well as an underlying ICT. And this was the only photo that I was able to find and I had to ask a friend for this, Captain Gary Kessler, who's a professor at Embry Riddle Aeronautical University. And he was able to take a photo of uh, a small part of a network on an actual ship. And I can't name the name of the ship. In fact, he didn't even tell me. But notice here, it pretty much looks like what we would find on a server farm. But notice that some of these devices are going to be geared toward things involved with ships. So, just like with aircraft, modern ships are floating computers and networks, both of which rely on those underlying cyber physical systems and the associated ICT. And finally, let's look at automobiles. So this is a vintage automobile, obviously. And so you can see just like with the older ship and the older example of an aircraft, that pretty much everything is a physical gauge and physical and physical knobs. There's nothing computerized about this antique car. This is a Tesla S. And notice that all those physical gauges are gone and now everything is computerized. You have this large LED screen in the middle and then in front of the driver you have this looks like what a heads up display in here. And this shows you some of the technology that's involved with self-driving cars. There's quite a few companies that are developing and researching the creation of self-driving cars. And you see some of the technologies that are involved in here. For example, in the upper left-hand corner, you see that the global positioning system is used for geolocation. You have radar sensors on the front and back. You have LIDAR, which is light detection and ranging. You have video cameras and you have ultrasonic sensors and also a central computer. That is a highly computerized automobile. It looks nothing like the automobiles, let's just say, going back 10 years or 20 years. These kinds of self-driving cars or assisted driving cars are going to be highly computerized. And they're all relying on the cyber physical systems. There's an engine in there. There's wheels there. And there's also the computers that assist the driver in maintaining safety and in driving the car. So modern automobiles are just rolling computers and networks. Is that the only place that you're going to find cyber physical systems and ICT? Absolutely not. Let's look at some more. Trains. Have you been on a train lately? Those are highly computerized. 
Helicopters. The new helicopters have a lot of cyber physical systems and ICT. Subway trains are highly computerized. Submarines. If you're in the military, you're going to see that those are very highly computerized. Drones. Whether we're talking about the small handheld drones or the larger ones that are used by the military, those are highly computerized. And even military tanks are computerized. So each of these is highly reliant on ICT and cyber physical systems. So in conclusion, we know that IT and cyber are fun topics and you get to learn a lot and you know how much technology has changed in the last few years. And as technology changes, it's changing it on almost a daily basis. Do you know it was only 2007 when the first smartphone and iPhone came out to the public? So that's only been 13 years and now pretty much uh, everyone has a smartphone. Also back in, let's go back to 2007, there was no such thing as a self-driving car. Uh, if, you, if you got on a plane, it probably wasn't going to be the type of plane that was fully automated. So technology as we know it is going to continue to change. So as technology changes, so will the need for skilled technicians who maintain currency with that technology. So once you get your degree, you should have a solid base for understanding all the other technologies, the cyber physical systems that are part of aircraft and ships and trains and automobiles and everything else I talked about. So the bottom line is there are lots of uses of IT and cyber. And so when you think about what you want to do after you graduate is don't limit yourself. Take in all the perspectives, do some reading, do some research, and try to think outside of the box because there are many other uses for what you've learned. Granted, you haven't learned everything that you would need to know working with the IT and cyber on a Boeing 777 or Tesla S, but it does mean you have a good grounding on the basics. This video was brought to you by the National Cybersecurity Training and Education Center out of Whatcom Community College.